Hi, this is Randy Nordale, and welcome to episode five of the SimNet Instructor videos. This episode is on pause and practice projects. Now, pause and practice projects are a little unique in that they're not projects that are auto graded in SimNet at this point. They are in the Sim book. So I'm going to go ahead and open up the Sim book. I'm going to go to the content area, choose Sim books, and like we've done in the past, select your, select your Sim book. Um, choose the chapter that you want. Again, moving from left to right, typically. Um, choose the chapter you want, actions menu, and preview. And that's going to open up our sim book. Now, pause and practice projects are unique to the in practice series. These are projects that are every two to three student learning outcomes. And here's a little bit about there's there tends to be three or four per chapter. They build on each other. And they're really good projects to use. Now, you can use them in a couple different ways. Actually, I'll pull up the table of contents, show you kind of how they're located here. So every two to three, three student learning outcomes is a pause and practice project. Um, these projects, the data files right here in the sim book, so students can download the data file right there. The um, instructions, very detailed. These would be like a guided project, very hand-holding, formative in nature, detailed instructions on how to do it and, uh, you know, on what to do and how to do it. A lot of screenshots, solution files at the end, all of that. Um, they're really good projects and, and, and they build on each other. So as they go from one to two and so on and so on, it's going to say, hey, open up that last file you completed. So they can't just jump to the last one and uh, and then on to the last one here. So they can be used in a few different ways. Um, if you're if you're teaching a hybrid or on site class, these are great projects to use as demos. This is what I do in class and I kind of go over, I don't go through all, all of them, but I'll go through highlights because some of the more challenging parts of each of these pause and practice projects. And if we have time, I tend to try to make time, is have the students do them in class. So I do a little mini lecture for 20 minutes or so and then give the students about an hour in class to go through and do the pause and practice projects. And so, so they can be used as demo projects if you're doing either an on-site or, uh, or hybrid class. If you're doing an online class, if you do videos for your students, this would be a great one to go through and do a video for your students for these, for these pause and practice projects and have them. Um, another way to use them is actually assign them. So I do, I assign student, I assign the pause and practice fraud projects for every chapter in all of my application courses. So it's the only hand graded assignment I do. I tend to assign the sim book first, again, formative in nature, mastery learning, uh, simulated environment, auto graded, um, exposes them to the skills in the chapter. Second thing I do are the pause and practice projects in the chapter. And so all I assign these and have them do all of those. And I'll show you how I assign them in just a little bit. I actually assign, I put them in my LMS as an assignment here since they're not auto graded in SimDad. But I assign the pause and practice projects and just have them turn in the last solution file and I hand grade that file and get it back. I have them upload it to my LMS. I kind of rough grade a whole class of them of 30, 35 in an hour or so. I go through and do that. That way they're getting some personalized feedback from me. So um, so I do assign the, the pause and practice projects for, for that and uh, it is the one assignment. So I do sim book first, then the pause and practice projects. Then I assign um, the uh, guided project, a SimNet auto graded guided project and either an independent or advanced depending on the chapter all assigned. So two SimNet projects that are auto graded. And then I do capstone projects every four or three chapters wherever wherever they land. So, um, so anyway, that's kind of the way I structure my course, but I just wanted to show you the pause and practice projects, great projects to use as a demo, use for a tutorial video for your students, assign them. Students, I, I find that if you have the bandwidth to do it and have the bandwidth to hand grade some assignments, these are really beneficial projects because they break the they break these projects into smaller chunks. And by the time they, if they do the pause and practice projects, when they get to the SimNet projects, the guided, the independent, the advanced, and even the capstone projects, 
they do great on those because they've had really good detailed practice on the pause and practice projects. So um, let me show you how I assign these in my classes. I actually make an assignment in Canvas. This is, this is Canvas. If you use another LMS, that's fine. You could do the same thing. But in assignments, I just I create one of these. I call it Chapter One PNP Projects, and I have a video like I like I have for other things: the SimBook, the SimNet projects, pause and practice projects, SimNet exams. I have videos, student videos for all of these. So I always have your students watch the video first before they complete the first one because it'll save you a lot of questions from your students if they'll watch the video. So, um, but anyway, I put the video in there to just make sure they watch it. I have a handout also on pause and practice projects, but they're just going to open up the sim book and do everything there. The data files are already embedded in the sim book, so they're right there for the student to use and um, they complete all of them. Um, I even put the link, I, I download the uh, Mac files. I have Mac files for these projects as well. So I download those and uh, put the link there for the students. But then I tell them which file to upload. So they just, after they finish that, they upload that particular file and that's what I grade. So pause and practice projects. If you have any questions about these, contact me or somebody on the team. Um, but uh, they're they're really, really good projects to use in your in your classroom, whether you're using them as a demo project or assigning them to students and hand grading them. So I hope this was helpful. Have a great day.